Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about soybean flowering. Well, when we get to this time of year, we're right at the longest day of the year. And when that happens, that triggers something in our indeterminate soybeans. Now, indeterminate soybeans that are grown in the northern half of the United States, they have their reproductive stages coming as soon as the day length starts to shorten. They're shorter season soybeans by nature, and so they know, hey, the season's starting to get shorter, I better start the reproductive stages if we want to get soybeans made by the time we get a frost. So what happens after that longest day of the year, June 21st, the soybeans sense that the day length is a little bit shorter and that's when they start to put flowers on. And then after that, basically the flowering kicks off the reproductive stages and then pretty soon pods come around, the pods fill and so on. But this is much different than what we find in the southern United States where they have determinate soybeans. Well, the indeterminate soybeans can be doing their vegetative growth at the same time as they're doing their reproductive stages, so they're flowering and putting on pods and so forth. With determinate beans in the southern half of our country, those soybeans will do all of their growth first and get big and tall and bushy, then they will start to do their flowering. So they're not doing the vegetative stages at the same time as the reproductive stages. So it's very much like corn. Corn grows up and grows tall, puts a tassel on, and then it stops the vegetative growth and then it starts reproduction. That's how the determinate beans work in the southern part of the U.S. The reason why this is an important thing to know for farmers in the northern part of the country is that once the beans hit about, let's say, June 25th to June 30th, I don't care when you planted them. If you planted them April 1st, May 1st, June 1st, they're going to start flowering. The reproductive stages kick in and the beans are just a little more sensitive to many things. So, for example, if a farmer wants to go out there and spray a herbicide, some of the herbicides to control weeds are not labeled once the beans begin to flower. So as a farmer, you can kind of plan out your entire growing season and say, hey, I've got these herbicides to spray early before flowering and these to spray later after flowering if I need them. Well, to say soybeans are sensitive once they start that reproductive stage is probably a little bit of an understatement because soybeans will abort a good share of their flowers. And the reason why, soybeans only have one purpose in life, it's to make seed. And so if they aren't sure that the weather's gonna be good enough, that they're gonna have enough fertility, that bugs aren't gonna destroy them, whatever, well, if they think they're in jeopardy, they're going to abort a bunch of the flowers and just save a few flowers to make sure they at least get a little bit of seed made so they can go on for another year. So what farmers have to do is try to influence those soybean plants, take away all the stresses they possibly can, whether it's drainage, whether it's compaction, whether it's fertility, weed control, diseases, insects. So the soybeans think everything is perfect. I can keep all these flowers because we're going to be able to make lots of seed. Well, once again, in the northern part of the United States where we have indeterminate soybeans, they will begin to flower shortly after the longest day of the year, which is June 21st. That's coming right up. So if there are weeds to control like our Weed of the Week, you better get it done right now. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. <laughs> 